Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Hundreds of thousands of Venezuelans flooded the streets of Caracas on Wednesday in a march with the casket of President Hugo Chavez. The massive procession brought Chavez's body to a military academy, where he'll lie and stayed until a funeral on Friday. Foreign leaders, including Bolivian President Evo Morales and Argentine President Cristina Kirchner, have begun arriving in Venezuela to pay their respects. Specs. The head of Venezuela's presidential guard told the Associated Press Chavez died of a massive heart attack triggered by his advanced stage of cancer. General Jose Ornea said Chavez's last words mouthed with his lips were, quote, I don't want to die. Please don't let me die. Republican Senator Rand Paul held up Senate proceedings for more than 12 hours Wednesday with an attempt to filibuster the confirmation of CIA nominee John Brennan. Paul challenged Brennan's bid over the Obama administration's use of drones and targeted killings, singling out the White House refusal to rule out strikes on U.S. soil. I will speak until I can no, no longer speak. I will speak as long as it takes until the alarm is sounded from coast to coast that our Constitution is important, that your rights to trial by jury are precious, that no American should be killed by a drone on American soil without first being charged with a crime, without first being found to be guilty by a court. Senator Paul began the filibuster shortly before noon and lasted until after midnight, noting he would fall well short of Senator Strom Thurmond's record 24-hour attempt to block the Civil Rights Act in 1957. And I would go for another 12 hours to try to break Strom Thurmond's record, but I've discovered that there are some limits to filibustering, and I'm going to have to go take care of one of those in a few minutes here. <laughs> of senators joined Paul throughout his effort. Democratic Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon said although he supports Brennan's nomination, he still wants the White House to release more legal memos on the assassination program. Every American has the right to know when their government believes that it is allowed to kill them. So now the executive branch has gradually provided Congress with much of its analyses on this crucial uh, topic, but I think more still needs to be done to ensure that we understand fully the implications of what these heretofore secret opinions uh, contain, and we have a chance to discuss them uh, as well. Appearing that same day before the Senate Judiciary Committee, Attorney General Eric Holder pledged President Obama will soon explain the legal rationale underpinning targeted assassinations. During his testimony, Attorney General Holder also publicly defended the federal prosecution of Aaron Swartz, the Internet freedom activist who took his own life in January. Aaron was weeks before a trial date for downloading millions of articles provided by the nonprofit research service JSTOR. He was facing 35 years in prison, a penalty supporters called excessively harsh. Appearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee, Holder told Republican Senator John Cornyn, thinks prosecutors acted appropriately. For up to a period of six months, there was never an intention for him to go to jail uh, for longer than a three, four, potentially five-month range. That was what the government said specifically to um, uh, Mr. Swartz. Those, uh, those uh, offers were rejected. Uh, does it strike you as odd that the government would uh, indict someone for crimes that would carry penalties of up to 35 years in prison and million dollar fines and then offer them a three or four month prison sentence? Well, I think that's a, a good use of prosecutorial discretion to look at the um, conduct, regardless of what the statutory maximums were, and to fashion a sentence that was consistent with uh, what the nature of the, the conduct was. And I think that what those prosecutors did in offering three, four, zero to six uh, was consistent with, with that conduct. So you don't consider this a case of prosecutorial overreach or misconduct? No, I don't look at what necessarily was charged as much as what was offered in terms of um, how the case might have been resolved. Attorney General Holder's comments were his most extensive on the Swartz case to date. In response, Senator Cornyn told Holder he thinks Aaron Swartz was unfairly targeted. I would suggest to you, if you're an individual American citizen uh, and you're looking at 
chart, criminal charges being brought by the United States government with all of the vast resources available to the government, uh, it strikes me as uh, disproportionate and uh, one that is basically uh, being used inappropriately to try to bully uh, someone into pleading guilty to something that strikes me as rather, uh, rather minor. You can go to our website at democracynow.org to hear Aaron Swartz in his own words, the major address he gave to the Freedom to Connect conference last year. Arkansas lawmakers have approved the harshest anti-abortion law in the country. On Wednesday, the state General Assembly voted to override Democratic Governor Mike Beebe's veto of a measure banning abortion after 12 weeks of pregnancy, roughly the point at which an abdominal ultrasound can detect a fetal heartbeat. Opponents expect the law to be overturned before it can take effect later this year. Federal law gives women the right to abortion up to around 24 weeks of pregnancy, double the Arkansas limit. On Wednesday, a federal judge struck down a 2011 Idaho law banning most abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy. It's believed to be the first time a federal court has declared such measures unconstitutional, likely setting a precedent for challenges to similar measures nationwide. House lawmakers have passed temporary legislation to avert a possible government shutdown later this month. The bill would keep the government funded through September 30th and a shift billions of dollars to military operations to soften the blow of automatic spending cuts that kicked in last week under so-called sequestration. The measure now heads to the Senate, which could extend relief to other departments. President Obama met with Republican senators over dinner Wednesday evening for talks aimed at reaching a longer-term deal. Rebel fighters in Syria have captured a group of 21 peacekeepers near the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. The rebels are demanding the withdrawal of Syrian government forces from the area in return for their release. A U.N. spokesperson confirmed the peacekeepers' capture. Approximately 30 armed fighters stopped and detained a group of about 20 peacekeepers within the area of limitation east of the B-Line. The UN observers were on a regular supply mission and were stopped near Observation Post 58, which had sustained damage and was evacuated this past weekend following heavy combat in, plo in close proximity at Al Jamla. The United Nations Children's Fund is accusing Israel of systematically abusing Palestinian children in military custody. In a new report, UNICEF says Israeli forces have subjected detained Palestinian youths to, quote, cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, as defined by the U.N. Convention Against Torture. UNICEF Special Representative Jean Go unveiled the report's findings. We identify a pattern of ill treatment when children are in military custody. And what we see is that this happens in the first 48 hours. Imagine a child sitting in front of an interrogator without sleeping. Uh, so that's very hard on the child, and that's difficult for him. So this is where we want to make the changes to make sure that that doesn't happen. According to UNICEF figures, Israel arrests and interrogates around 700 Palestinian children aged 12 to 17 each year. The Guardian of London's revealed new details on the Bush administration's support for sectarian militias in its bid to defeat the Iraqi resistance after the 2003 invasion. The Guardian reports a key U.S. general behind the effort, James Steele, had firsthand knowledge of brutal torture carried out by Iraqi surrogates, but did nothing to stop it. Speaking to The Guardian, Iraqi general said Steele was unfazed when the torture of a young prisoner interrupted his lunch. One of the detainees was screaming. By chance, James Steele was there, outside, washing his hands. He opened the door and saw the detainee. He was hanging by his legs, upside down. James Steele didn't react at all when he saw this man. It was just normal. He closed the door and came back to his seat in the advisor's room. Retired Colonel Steele served as then Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld's liaison with Iraq's special police commandos. His stint in Iraq came 20 years after overseeing the U.S. Special Operations Forces that trained government death squads in El Salvador. 
The New York State Assembly has approved a measure that would impose a two-year ban on the gas drilling process of hydraulic fracturing, or fracking. New York has enforced a moratorium on fracking since 2008, but it's currently up for review. The ban now goes to the state Senate. And the nonprofit news magazine Mother Jones has been named the recipient of the fifth annual Izzy Award for Special Achievement in Independent Media. The Izzy Award is named after the legendary muckraking journalist I.F. Stone, who launched I.F. Stone's Weekly in 1953 and exposed government deception, McCarthyism, and racial bigotry. The Park Center for Independent Media said it chose Mother Jones for publishing, quote, major timely stories and investigations throughout 2012 that had significant public impact. The magazine shook up last year's presidential campaign when Washington bureau chief David Korn released the infamous video showing Republican hopeful Mitt Romney dismissing 47 percent of the U.S. electorate as people, quote, dependent upon government who believe that they are victims, unquote. In a recent interview, Romney said the video's release was partially to blame for his loss. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.